The Hyundai Kona Electric is an impressive car. It offers an estimated 258 miles of range per charge, comes with rapid charging as standard, 70 kilowatts maximum power at the time of filming this, but potentially more in the future, and has plenty of onboard tech to keep occupants safe and entertained. Early European reviews of the Kona Electric were seriously glowing, and on paper, it seemed to offer the best match of range, charging capabilities, and price. Interest is high, too. About six weeks ago, we ran a piece on this channel asking if automakers should be scared of the Hyundai Kona Electric, and at the time of filming this, it's rocketed to our second most popular video of all time. So you'd think then that Hyundai would be doing everything it possibly could to get the Kona Electric into as many dealerships and onto as many driveways as possible, right? The thing is, it seems that the Kona Electric, just like the Ionic EV before it, is going to be quite difficult to buy in certain markets. In Europe, only certain trim levels of the Kona EV are available right now, with other models, including the more affordable 39.2 kilowatt hour battery pack variant, yet to hit dealer lots. And we've just heard this week that Hyundai North America is restricting its initial availability in the US of the Kona Electric to a handful of markets. Those markets? Yep, you've guessed it. California, the Pacific Northwest, and a few northeastern U.S. states. The states that have all adopted California's zero-emission vehicle mandate program. And that's caused several outlets and experts to question if Hyundai is serious about making the Kona Electric a mass-produced electric car, or, like so many automakers before it, seems to only want to sell the Kona Electric in markets where it will sell easily and allow it to cash in on zero-emission vehicle mandates while churning out gas-guzzling SUVs. Honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you were sitting there watching this video and having those exact same thoughts. But while it's easy to let conspiracy theories of big oil trying to kill all electric cars and every automaker except Tesla joining in the push, I think the issue this time is far more down to earth, if just as scary. Sure, apathy on behalf of Hyundai could be the reason, uh, but I don't think it is, since Hyundai and its sister company Kia have both been pushing away from hydrogen fuel cells and towards electric vehicles for a number of years. But to find the real culprit, I think we need to look back to earlier this year, when production of the Hyundai Ionic EV seemed to slow to a crawl, frustrating customers who had already placed deposits on their new cars and putting many more customers off even buying one. The reason? Not some deep, dark desire to kill the electric car, but a battery shortage, a global one. A shortage which this year we've heard is being made worse by some of the battery suppliers that automakers rely on for producing their car's battery packs. The Ionic EV was a car that was in fact far more popular with customers than Hyundai ever expected it to be, meaning that its battery supply contract with LG Chem, its chosen battery supplier, wasn't anywhere near enough to satisfy vehicle demand. It is unfortunately getting worse too. Battery suppliers, there are reasonably small numbers around the world with the facilities and knowledge to produce automotive grade lithium ion battery packs, are also very much in control of the battery market. For example, some insiders allege that battery companies, no names are given, are essentially reneging on existing battery cell supply contracts in order to make more money selling batteries at a markup to customers in China. Whether this is true or not remains to be seen, and I don't have the contacts to verify this firsthand. But it certainly sounds plausible in a market where everyone from automakers to computer manufacturers and cell phone companies simply can't get enough batteries. As Bloomberg reported at the start of this month, it's being made even worse by the fact that the government of South Korea has been working hard to encourage businesses to adopt grid-tied battery storage systems, offering massive discounts for those who do. That's led to a massive rush in lithium-ion cell demand in South Korea, with current estimates saying that there will be 3.7 gigawatt hours of battery storage installed and operational in the country by the end of this year. Samsung SDI and LG Chem, two of the world's largest battery suppliers and a source of up to 60% of all US lithium-ion battery packs, are based in Korea and have been prioritizing production for domestic sales above everything else. 
Tesla has been adding to the problem too. While its own production facilities for battery packs in the form of the Tesla Gigafactory are a great thing, it spent quite a large part of this year buying in larger quantities of lithium ion cells from other companies, further adding to the shortage. Of course, Tesla has the right attitude in building its own in-house lithium ion production facilities. Other automakers like Volkswagen, BMW and Mercedes-Benz are all following suit with their own plans to produce batteries in-house. And General Motors, while it does rely on LG Chem for battery packs for its Volt range extended EV and Bolt EV, actually has local production facilities that it runs with LG Chem to ensure it has a good supply of cells for its cars. Which brings us back to Hyundai. While it may at first seem that this automaker is making a half-assed attempt to sell its new long-range CUV, it's more likely that limited battery supply problems that plagued it with the Ionic EV are still present and threatening the Kona Electric. Rather than try to launch in every market to deliver cars to customers wherever they may be, it makes sense to focus on markets where demand is likely highest. Why? Well, every time a new car is launched, dealerships have to train their staff to sell and service them. And that certification process takes money and time. And if a dealership is being asked to spend a big money on training for a new model that's in limited supply, well, they're less likely to want to sell it. Yes, for now, the Kona Electric will continue to be a car that you'll struggle to buy in some markets. But hopefully, assuming Hyundai can solve its battery supply problem, it will disappear and will then see more worldwide sales in the very near future. Are you waiting for a Kona Electric? Do you think the battery shortage is to blame? And is it Hyundai's fault for not thinking ahead like some of its rivals did and compounding the problem? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.